Let's talk about from search to sales, so unlocking the secrets of Amazon's algorithm. I mean, uh, Amazon is a search engine. Yeah, everyone knows that, right? So people don't go to Amazon just to browse different categories. I mean, I'm sure, uh, I mean, uh, there's uh, different kinds of people. Uh, so may, maybe there probably there are some people who just go category by category. But that, I, would, I mean, that would be so inconvenient way how to find a product. Because let's say I'm trying to find um, for the family from Amazon. Um, but let, let's say that I, I just uh, need to find like these, uh, what, like Bluetooth blocking glasses. Blue light, blue light, sorry, not Bluetooth, but blue light. So, I mean, if I really need to go by category, get by category to find these products, then, I mean, it's going to take me much longer time than just typing it that blue light blocking glasses or whatever the term is. So that's pretty much the way how Amazon is uh, used by majority of people. So then it comes down to the question that, okay, so uh, what about the like algorithm uh, behind it? Like what, what makes it decide that, hey, we just got this someone just searched by using these keywords so what are the products that we are going to sell because we have probably billions of products including variations in in their product assortment so which products are we going to sell for this customer in this uh, uh, in these keywords so let, let's talk about it so yeah i mean let's talk about factors influencing product ranking overview of the a9 a10 algorithm best practices for optimization so factors influencing this product ranking and number one is absolutely relevance so how relevant is the product listing for that uh, keyword in question and what defines relevance? Well, it's a good way how to think, think about it is that, I mean, the algorithm tries to read our product listing or tries to e read the, tries to make, make conclusions about our products based on what we actually input on Amazon. So that means that they're going to be I mean, first of all, I mean, we are going to be choosing categories. So that already gives some hints to Amazon that, oh, okay, or um, uh, hints to the algorithm that, okay, this product is in the travel category in these bags or whatever. So that already gives some clues for the algorithm that, hey, this product is probably something related with, uh, it, it's some kind of bag, it's some kind of bag. But then we give additional information uh, on the on the listing itself that we use different kinds of words to uh, for that the algorithm. I mean, so that the algorithm can really figure out that what is this product that is uh, that this listing is about. So that's really the proper way to uh, like think about this. That when when, when, when the machine reads the information that we have put in, into our listing, so are, are, is it able to appropriately figure out what kind of product it is and who is the user and where should it show this product listing? So that's really the key thing here to understand that how relevant are you, how relevant is the product listing in, in terms of how the algorithm actually understands the listing? So that means that uh, he, he, here comes the key to really optimization because if you are doing a really crappy 
job in explaining the algorithm, what the product listing is, then how, what do you think? Like, how could you be able to show it in all these different places that our product re really is relevant, but we are not, we just fail to explain or really make the case for the, for the algorithm that, hey, you should be showing this product in all these different places, but then the, we actually fail in that, in making good enough case for the algorithm to understand that, hey, I mean, I mean, this product is about uh, these and these things, and it's relevant for all these different keywords and search search terms. So, Amazon, it's all about the keywords, and the more relevant keywords the product has, the higher it will show up in the search results. So, okay, let's talk about like how, um, and actually for, for this, it's super duper in, important to understand that what is the, what, what are the right keywords for us? I mean, uh, what are the right keywords for the uh, product listing? And if we are not doing a good enough job in figuring out the uh, appropriate keywords and um, like optimizing for those then we are we are we are missing out like we really, really really big time and the reality is that it's simply not possible to add all these uh possible keywords that you can imagine for the product listing i mean it's not really feasible that if to optimize or it's not even possible to optimize for million different keywords. Sure, I mean, all these million different keywords are related with our product, with the product listing, but we have to actually prioritize the keywords and then based on, really based on like how, I mean, really based on like, is there really space space for us in, in that given keyword? Because if, if there's, um, if there is no space for us, if we, it's really difficult to get on top of that keyword. Then, I mean, obviously it doesn't make sense that we optimize for that keyword because let's say that we have uh, 10 different keywords that we are figuring, uh, considering that, hey, which one should we really optimize mainly for? Uh, we can see the first keyword. I mean, oof, it's so bombarded with all these different competitors. I mean, and they are really doing a good job in the product listing and uh, with images and the pricing is good. So uh, it's going to be tough to compete with all these different listings. So let's take a look at another key, uh, another keyword. Hey, here on this, this second keyword, there's actually just uh, uh, two really good uh, competitors, but the rest of and then there's maybe three ones that are okay, but the rest of them are not doing good job, good job at all. So, but then if it's really a case that there's il enough like volume on this keyword, then it would make sense that, hey, let's actually pick this keyword because there's enough demand on that and we can, it's possible for us to beat all the competitors or at least get to the top, top three of the page. And Amazon is not Google, meaning that when, when you do a Google search, then, I mean, it's only going, only going to be the first search result that gets all the clicks. I mean, that's pretty much how Google has been and, and still is. But I mean, Amazon, uh, no, and I'm, I mean, every, pretty, pretty much like every listing on the first page is going to be getting sales. So it's much more like evenly distributed. So, yeah, I mean, okay then obviously we need to optimize. So we need to tell, uh, we know that our product is relevant for the keyword, but I mean, the algorithm doesn't know that yet. So we need to figure out a way how to tell the algorithm that, hey, our product listing is relevant for this keyword. So, I mean, come on, make us visible in this keyword, right? So optimization is done or, I mean, optimization is a tool how to really uh, make our product listing relevant for that uh, 
uh, keyword. And guys, are like, have you ever seen um, uh, like uh, search results like where one or two or multiple? I mean, let's say it's a pretty like popular uh, like keyword search term. So, but ha- so it's not any kind of like anomaly, but it's some kind of like keyword that has pretty good demand. So have you ever seen the case that, hey, there's actually one, two, three products that have not have nothing to do with this keyword, but still somehow they are uh, shown in, in, the, in the first page. I'm sure you have seen those and it's actually pretty common to see those. So it, it, it basically means that those product listings ha- aren't, I mean, are not relevant at all to this uh, keyword, but still they are visible there. And actually that's something that Amazon wants to avoid, but uh, it's just a case that when you spill out certain data to the algorithm, then it will just simply think it's relevant for this certain keyword, even when it's not. So. That means that it's not really about the product and it's not about only about the categories or that kind of stuff. I mean, you can make your product, you can make the product listing relevant in, uh, in keywords that really wouldn't be related with the product at all. So the thing is that uh, when, when the algorithm works in such a way, it, we have to make sure that we actually do a good job in explaining the, the relevancy, right? So yeah, I mean, typical optimization, title bullets, blah, 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 relevant keywords in the product description. I mean, you should know that already, right? And one major factor is really, I mean, uh, it, it has to be relevance, but also, I mean, uh, it goes hand in hand with sales. Because let's say that the product listing is super duper relevant for the keyword, but you are not, um, but it's not getting any sales done. Then I mean, it's not going to show up there, because sales velocity is absolutely uh, number one, like determining factor in order to get like visibility. So if a product listing is not getting any sales, then it's not going to get, uh, it's not going to get visibility either. I'm sure Amazon or the algorithm will test it out in different places, but still without, without, uh, uh, sales, then uh, it's just going to be much, much, much harder. So the more often people buy it, the higher it will show up in the search results. So if you want to help a product climb the ranks, make people keep buying it, right? That goes without saying. So, I mean, what can we do? to increase uh, sales, I mean, there's just millions different ways. So, I mean, uh, and, and one thing is that even after we do optimization, we still need to get sales because if we just t- change the listing and everything, and even if we make it perfect, and if we don't, we are not getting sales, then I mean, it's not gonna make an impact. So we absolutely need to uh, get sales also to, You know, it's kind of like making the point across to the algorithm, meaning that, okay, we made some changes on the product listings, but I mean, the algorithm algorithm will not really care about the changes we do if we are not getting any sales. So that means that we pretty much have to do anything we can to get sales. So promotions, discounts, and then, I mean, uh, pricing, external traffic, and one thing, that absolutely uh, impacts the visibility is also this pricing. And typically I've seen it so many times that the algorithm doesn't really like uh, sudden spikes in, in the say, uh, in, in the pricing, meaning that if you just suddenly like increase it significantly, like let's say that, oh, uh, it's the product is like 30 bucks, then 40 bucks, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 70 bucks or whatever. I mean, like 
what, what might happen that if you really want to slow down the sales uh, so you don't run out of stock. I mean, I've done it many times. I mean, even sometimes I did it even so drastically, meaning that you just multiply the price pretty much. But typically, uh, I mean, the algorithm doesn't really like those kind of like drastic changes. And in oftentimes, like, um, like you might wonder that, hey, uh, how do you get this Amazon, Amazon's choice bats? And sometimes you could easily just get it by offering, uh, I mean, doing changes in the prices mean that you just lower the price and boom, then you suddenly get the bats, even though it's not only about pricing, meaning that you're not necessarily going to be Amazon's choice just because you have the lowest price. But still, I mean, the algorithm takes product pricing into account when determining the product ranking. So yeah, one thing that we really have to do is dig into this data for the dark target market. So we can do actually a different kind of dynamic pricing just to adjust the prices in real time based on demand and competition. So nowadays, uh, I mean, there's these features in Seller Central where you can, where you can do uh, different stuff. I mean, where, where you can automate the pricing. So, yeah, the algorithm, uh, I mean, if we just consider that, what is the task that it is trying to do? It's trying to give the best customer experience, the best user experience, meaning that when a customer goes to the site, and search for something it's trying to find the best the best uh, the best uh, answer or the best result for uh, for that query for that customer it's trying to figure out that the, what the customer is really trying to find so it's trying to tell the customer that hey you just search for this item and this this product here, I mean, it it has uh, good, good. Uh, I mean, it has good enough demand. I mean, it can see that, like people are already buying it. It has good reviews, good rating, and it's all also getting uh, tons of other action as well. Meaning that this listing here, it's getting a lot of like external traffic. Let's say from social media or paid advertising from YouTube or TikTok or whatever. I mean, these are all signs that tell the algorithm that, hey, something is going on here. So, I mean, this product listing here, it's getting sales. It's getting all these different actions. It, it's, I mean, people are adding it to the car. People are adding it to the wish list. People are doing all sorts of like buying activities and uh, it has good enough like uh, there's a lot of like it has good enough traffic in the listing and it has good enough conversion as well so these are signals that tell the algorithm that hey maybe i should show this product listing here first for for the customer so maybe maybe, maybe this is the best option this search results that I should be showing to the customer. So that's really like the, the like philosophy <laughs> behind what the algorithm is trying to do, right? So then it's up to us to really do all those different activities that make the algorithm think that, hey, this is probably the best result that I should be showing to the customer when they are searching for this given keyword. And um, yeah, it really comes down to understanding the user's uh, query. So really, it's trying to figure out that what the customer is uh, searching for. And oftentimes the keyword can actually be wrong because oftentimes people are not really certain about the keyword that they should be using because 
maybe they don't know oftentimes they don't know exactly what's it's called or they don't know what's the best keyword to so they are, they are trying out different keywords so at the same time algorithm is also trying to figure out uh, okay what, what's the best result what what is the customer actually looking for and what the customer is likely to buy so it's all about um, or the first thing really what the algorithm is trying to do is trying to understand this intent the user's intent what is the user really trying to do what, or what is the user trying to look for what kind of problem they have and what are the possible solutions uh, that the customer or the user in this case needs so the algorithm is going to search through the entire catalog to find the relevant products it then filters and classifies these products based on factors such as category price brand and other relevant attributes and these attributes are different kinds of things that tell the algorithm that there's something going on with this product so i'm actually going to pick this product because the likelihood uh, I mean, this product has the highest likelihood in making the sale. So it's all about making the sale, right? So the algorithm is trying to make the sale. So, I mean, after the relevant products have been identified, the algorithm just ranks them based on the relevance to the query. So different factors are considered like relevant sales, sales velocity, customer reviews, availability, shipping options. So that makes, um, that's a really important point there as well. I mean, is it prime? Because um, one thing, I mean, in uh, California, in US, I mean, one thing about Amazon is that it's convenient and everyone, I mean, actually not everyone, but most people, most Amazon customers expect that I order it today, so it should arrive uh, today or uh, tomorrow or the day after the latest so meaning it's two day sipping and it's free it's free sipping so that's what i as a customer expect so is it prime and is it free sipping and also like there was uh, crystal mentioned on slack about the availability of the inventory so if there's uh, if, if there's not enough not enough inventory uh, near the location of their uh, customer, then it's not going to show that product. I mean, it's not going to be the highest highest search result if, if there's a case that another option actually has inventory in, near the uh, customer. So then it's actually going to favor the other product listing if these two product listings are like equal in terms of other, uh, other uh, aspects. And then pricing, absolutely. But it, you cannot really say that the cheapest products would get uh, the sale because the point point is that uh, Amazon also wants to increase uh, their profits, like how much revenue they are making. So it's not only about the cheapest products. So that's why Amazon choice is not really either about the cheapest products. So even if you are the cheapest one, it doesn't mean that you're going to be getting the Amazon's uh, choice path. And here is actually the history of this whole thing is that, and the search results is pretty interesting because um, when they were like the early days of this algorithm, they were thinking, uh, Amazon was thinking, uh, I mean, the head of Amazon, they, they were considering that like, how are we going to rank all these different search results? Then one uh, uh, Amazon executive said that, well, obviously we want to put our own product uh, products uh, first, meaning the inventory that uh, is on Amazon or it, that it's sold by Amazon, meaning that because early on, I mean, um, when Amazon started, it, uh, it, there was not really, not really like third-party sellers. No, it was actually Amazon selling those products. 
So they had the inventory and they had the, I mean, they didn't have the inventory, but they were mainly doing, but then, then third parties, sellers like us, like increased. So there was discussion that what should be the first result. So one Amazon executive was saying that, I mean, obviously what we want to put the Amazon products first or the Amazon or the products sold by Amazon first. But then actually Jeff Bezos said that, no, 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 no. We are actually go going to be putting uh, first the, one, the product that gives the best user experience. So whatever results into the best consum uh, con consumer experience, then that's the result that we should be sold, right? And the reason behind that is that, I mean, the whole like mission of Amazon has been that they want to be the most uh, customer centric company in, in, in the planet. So when, when you consider that, when you consider the history, then, I mean, it makes sense that it comes down to not so what is really best for Amazon, but what, what is best for the customer. So they are always considering the customer and uh, what's really best for the customer. And here, it's also important to understand that, I mean, these search results are like customers or personalized because it, the search results actually depend on the previous search and the purchase history and other factors such as location and device type. And, uh, and uh, I mean, and also like what is the nearest fulfillment center and those kind of things. And then about images and videos, I mean, what, uh, I mean, a really important part of optimization is, I mean, are actually essential in optimization are having a really high quality engaging visuals because, I mean, those just improve the click-through rate and, and conversion uh, rate. So me including different lifestyle and accent shots and using infographics and comparison charts and doing video demonstrations and optimizing images and videos for fast loading and compatibility with different devices. But I mean, this is just pretty basic stuff about optimization, right? So we want to use the relevant and targeted keywords as that's really one of the most important factors when optimizing the listings for the algorithm. And uh, uh, there, and it's kind of going, uh, there's a good question about like, okay, I mean, is it, which is better, more keywords or less keywords? And, you know, it's going, been going in, in different phases because I remember like when we started, it was all about just keyword stuffing, meaning that we want to be relevant or we want to be visible in as many keywords as possible. But then it kind of shifted that actually less is more. So the more, the better we optimize for these uh, less keywords, I mean, the better results we started to get. But then there was another shift. And uh, so it, it comes more down to like doing experimentations and figure and trying out that, hey, I do a change and what's the result and what happens now and is the result better or worse? So reviews and ratings, I mean, we already talked about that. So, so we, I mean, that's part of optimization as well and really keeping a good, uh, keeping your real real estate and your amazon real estate in 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 good shape and then also doing the part in, in on the back end as well so meaning that well i mean this actually depends on the on the category nowadays because there's um there's different best practices for different uh Category, so I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say that you use all available characters to include as many relevant keywords as possible. No, I mean, it depends more on the case by case. It depends on the category, but yeah, I mean, absolutely singular and plural forms of keywords and misspelling synonyms and, uh, and, and stuff like that. So, but I mean, we should be bold 
enough to try out different things and just and all in all like like when you get people when you get VAs when you get people working for you or like if it's just you or your business partner or whatever I mean if it's even if it's just you alone then I mean it's really good to build this um, behavioral or culture of experimentation meaning that you try out different things and see what's the result because then i mean it's go- just going to force you to be more creative and innovation and sure i mean if it's just you or your business partner and you're just working alone in your business then sure i mean it's, it's pretty easy to be innovative or creative or do experiments or whatever because i mean it's just you and you whatever you do then that's the whole company right but then i mean when you get more people then it's come down to like what kind of behavior you want your team to show and absolutely i mean if you think that what comes through uh experimentation for example gmail by google i mean that's a result of just uh these hobby and experimentations of uh, different Google employees. And same thing with Amazon. There's many different things that are just result result of people or the employees like doing experiments and saying that, hey, this I have an idea for this. Let, let's try it out and see does it work. And actually every single team on Amazon, uh, I mean, they, they, I mean, they have different KPIs and whatnot. And the one KPI is also like how many experiments they are doing per, per given time. So I really strongly encourage you to build that kind of like experimentation culture for your own, for your own team as well. Meaning that you encourage people to do different kinds of experiments, and obviously many of those are uh, uh, will not result uh, into like big wins so that the point is that I mean the, the reason that people don't do any experiments is usually because first of all maybe they don't have enough time or they are just afraid that the result is not going to be good so we need to you know get over the fear of failure or or whatever yeah so anyway uh, a plus content and text over there. So all text and can improve the product visibility and searchability on Amazon. And then incorporating these relevant keywords in the product list and content. I mean, yeah, that's one, one thing to do there as well.